So hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lucy and today I'm finally filming my review of the incomparable Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. Now first off, I must apologise because I've got a really heavy cold and today's probably the only day I can film this video and the lighting is dark, it's really autumnal, it's really rainy so I'm just going to record this video and I apologise that I'm, you know, really croaky and all disgusting sounding. But hopefully we can battle through this review. So, Empire of Storms is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. Which is one of my favourite series. And I talk about it all the time. So, you're probably all familiar with this series. And if you aren't, I suggest you start watching this video in the nicest way. And go and pick up Throne of Glass. Because this series is one of the standout series in YA at the minute. And it's fantastic, it's brilliant, and it will definitely change your life, I think. So, usually with these types of reviews, I would do a non-spoiler section and then go on to a spoiler review. Now, I am not going to do a non-spoiler section except say these few words. This book was absolutely incredible. Like, I thought Queen of Shadows was good. Oh no, this blew it out of the water yet again. I can't even put into words how brilliant this book was. And this book just upped the ante for me completely. It was, oh God, it was everything I wanted and it was everything I needed in the book. And it was just, I'm terrified now for the final book. So that's probably all I'm gonna say about the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series. If you haven't read this yet, like I said, don't spoil yourself, it's not worth it. The rest of this video is going to be spoilers, so. Goodbye if you haven't read the book. And if you're up to date with the series but you just haven't read Empire Storms yet, good luck. Okay, so we now should have all read the book. Um, words, I do not have them. I tried to write down a few points about this book um, and all I got was OMG and then a couple of other points that I want to talk about. So this book is a beast in both size and depth. We start off with lots of different points of view. We follow Dorian, we follow Aelin, we follow Alid, we follow Manon. And in a unique way that Sarah J Maas just can conquer like that, these are all brought together into one unified plot. I thought this was bloody brilliant. The amount of craft and the amount of skill to do that is impressive. So I'm going to talk about the different points of views and which ones I preferred. So Aelin's point of view I had issues with at the start. I think being in Aelin's head is always a difficult thing because she's a character who progresses so much in the book and she is a character who isn't perfect and whilst I really love that about her she does some things that I don't necessarily agree with or can't support and she says some things that great on me but I still love her as the main character. The point of view that I absolutely adored from the start however was Manon's. I love Manon so much like I oh my god she is just one of the best characters in YA for me. She has so many different facets of her personality. I will go into why I think Aelin and Manon are basically parallels later in the review. Manon and Aelin both have flaws. And that is what is great about both their characters. Because you will encounter a lot of the time in YA the type of kind of book kicking heroine who, you know, is really, really strong and fierce, but also has this really soft side and vulnerable side. And yes, that is brilliant. Um, it's showing that, you know, there is vulnerability to being fierce and strong. What I like about Aelin and Manon is that they're a bit of a bitch sometimes. They are quite cruel and bloodthirsty and they don't give a shit. And I really, really appreciate how Sarah J Maas crafts these characters. It makes them so much more relatable because, you know, we each have bad and good in us. And Manon and Aelin especially have good and bad in them too. So I'm gonna go back to the start again. We pick up at Aelin's point of view. She's tr been traveling from Ardland to Terrasen, I believe, and she is going to reclaim her home. And then something kind of puts a spanner in the works in that she can't reclaim her home and she can't reclaim Terrison until she has an army. My expectations for Empire of Storms were that Aelin would walk into her home, she would reclaim the throne, and then she would wage war against Erewhon. No, that didn't happen. She can't even get into her homeland, really. So that is what is going to be reserved for the last book, I believe. But what this really sets up is an incredible plot in that 
Aelin needs to form allies. She needs to go and get as many men as she can. She needs to go and approach everybody that she knows. And this starts with Captain Rolf in Skulls Bay. All the scenes in Skulls Bay were brilliant and the action especially was just amazing. And what I really, really loved about Empire Storms, I realise I'm going really like off kilter here. I don't have much structure at the minute in this review, but it's getting there, I promise. What I really liked about Empire Storms is it felt like there was a team together. Aelin had her crew. She had Rowan, she had Adian, she had Dorian, and then Manon, and it was just badass. And then whilst Aelin's journey is happening, Manon's journey is happening as well. So I'm now going to go into the parallels between Aelin and Manon. So there are loads of parallels between Aelin and Manon, but I think what sets them both out is that Manon is what is kind of stereotypically defined as evil. Like, I wouldn't call her evil, but she's definitely on the side of bad in the last book. You know, she's fighting with the enemy. And then Aelin is trying to destroy the said enemy. And what happens is their paths continue, but then they merge. They're both from very royal lines. They both go through similar kind of self-discoveries and they are both very fierce and they want to protect the people they care about. They are willing to kill anyone else to do it. And what I liked in this book is how there was some tension with the two of them, especially at the start of the book or when Manon kind of lands on the boat. But what I like is how they learn to trust each other and they learn to get on. And what I loved, the scene on the beach where Aelin gets captured by Maeve and Manon does exactly what she says. She takes the lead away and to a lead that looks like betrayal. But really, Manon understands exactly where Aelin's coming from and she understands what she needs to do to help her. And honestly, these two women, like, I just need the next book for them to just be like simultaneously kicking ass, taking names, but also ruling over their separate countries and separate like domains. They are both amazing and I am so thankful that we have not one, but two, or maybe more, badass women in this book who I can root for and I just love them both. So yeah. Now, I'm going to talk about the ships because this book is just empire of ships, okay? So my number one ship in this book, I mean, it's kind of a tough one because there are two which really stood out for me. But number one, Alid and Lorcan. Oh God, reading their story just killed me. Basically, I knew I was into a winner when Sarah J Maas employed my favourite trope in all the fiction, which is the fake marriage trope. And it's where, you know, two people are forced to pretend that they're husband and wife to like protect themselves. Yes, I was a fan. And I really loved how Lorcan was very fiercely protective over a lead. And they had brilliant banter and they, I don't know, I just feel like a lead broke down all these barriers around Lorcan. But tragically, at the same time, his blood oath to Maeve still stood. And that was the thing that just wasn't going to budge. It couldn't budge because it's a blood oath. And what I love now is how that blood oath doesn't exist. And even though Lorcan is like ashamed and everyone hates him because he sold them out and Elite hates him, at least there's no blood oath in the way now for those two to like properly get together. And I'm ready for it. I am waiting for that scene, okay? And secondly, my favorite ship was Manon and Dorian. And I know there's been some kind of chaos and drama in the fandom because of this pairing. I don't want to talk about the drama. I want to avoid the drama and the hatred for this ship because I bloody love them. I think Dorian needs somebody like that. And Manon's also a very, very fierce character. And I think she needs someone like Dorian as well who can give back as much as she can give. But they're like, rapport and all their scenes together just made me fall in love with them even more so i'm a fan of this one in terms of rowan and aelin holy crap some really hot scenes in there which i just fell in love with and i just love their relationship they are both so hilarious and headstrong and also the fact that Maeve conceals from aelin that rowan was her mate all that time oh my god oh while i'm on it the plot twist in this book like Holy shit, Aelin has to die to save the world. Great. It's either Aelin or Dorian because they're both from the same line. I'm done with this series if either of them die in the next book. That ending especially. The whole Elena scenes. I was really confused when I opened up the book and it was a scene from Elena and Gavin's point of view. I was like, 
um, is this a weird flashback? Like, I wasn't really sure what was happening. Now it all makes sense. Elena basically saved her skin and was like, fuck it, I'm not gonna be here in the future. Future generations can deal with this. That was intense, that was really, really intense. And I'm just in awe. Like, so much happened in this book. Like, it is a bit of a beast, let's be honest. But so much happened that I wanted to happen. We found out a lot more about the world, about the characters, and now it's just, what is gonna happen? Aelin's gonna have to die, like now she's got all of her armies, okay, maybe something's gonna happen, but then she needs to be rescued from Maeve first, which I'm anticipating will be, you know, the kind of main focus of the first half of the next book, maybe. I'm also not ready for the series to end. I'm hyper aware that this is book five of six. The next book we get will be the last ever Throne of Glass book. Not ready for that. But yeah, okay, talking about the next book, what I want to happen. Dorian and Manon, end game. Elide and Lorcan to finally get together properly. Um, and I also would like Aelin and both Dorian to survive. Like, is that too much to ask? Um, I know there's not gonna be a happy ending because it's Sarah J Maz and she tears out hearts and we thank her for it. So guys, that was my really horribly rambly review of Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maz. If you've made it to the end, thank you so much. Let me know if you've made it to the end because you're a trooper. I'm also going to be chairing an Empire of Storms event with Sarah J Maz in Glasgow on the 11th of October. So if you're around Glasgow and you'd like to come, I'll leave the ticket link down below. I'm so excited to be talking to Sarah on stage in front of all you lovely people, so it's gonna be fab. Let me know your thoughts on Empire Storms down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys and thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.